Hey everyone, welcome back to the workshop. And today I am really excited to be checking out what I would consider a next generation diode laser. And that is the IKEA K1 Pro. This is a 24 watt diode laser that has some really cool features that I have not seen on any other lasers to date. So if you wanna find out about this laser and what I think about it, stay tuned. We are going to jump right into it. All right, so here we have it. This is the IKEA K1 Pro. As I mentioned earlier, this is what I would consider a next generation laser. And I'm going to go for, over some of the specifications and explain why I think that is. So this is the pro version, which means it's the 24 watt version. They do also have a 48 watt version. That is their pro max. And as well, they have a entry level 10 or 12 watt version as well. The cutting area on this machine is 410 by 410 millimeters or roughly 16 by 16 inches square. So that's your working area inside the laser. The engraving speed on this machine is advertised to be a blisteringly fast 800 millimeters a second, which also equates to 48,000 millimeters a minute. That is pretty insane speeds for these. I'm a little skeptical on what you're going to get at those, but I will do my best to test this out as fast as I feel I can push it. It does, of course, have limit switches for your X and Y homing, so it can come home into the upper left corner, find out where its starting point is, and then allow you work in absolute coordinates. On top of that, it also has a stepper controlled Z axis, which allows the machine to control the Z axis up, up and down, which gives us two features. And this is part of the next level bit of this laser. It will have an autofocus. It lowers down, it touches off on the surface as knows how far off to back off to be in focus. Now with that, you can also set up a feature within Lightburn and others to do step down cutting so that it will lower that Z axis down a specified amount each pass it makes. So not only can you make multiple passes, but you can lower that focal point down to get the most of your cutting power. On top of that, another high end feature of this laser is that it has linear rail and linear rods on all of the moving areas in the gantry and such. So uh, no more wheels and bearings that need to be adjusted, tightened, loosened, and eccentric nuts to make them work. These are very tight, they are very strong, they have bearings that will hold them smoothly on those and allow for very, very little to no slop in there. So uh, it's awesome to see that. You see that on higher end machines, and it's great to see it on these diodes as well. You do still have them being belt driven and you do need to continue to adjust those, but your maintenance as far as adjusting the wheels and making sure that those are uh, snug and in alignment are, is a thing of the past. They do also step up the cable management game. And so as you'll see on here, the cable does run through the frame as much as possible. And then they have nice intersections to keep that, those cables moving freely, but out of the way and also have uh, uh, enough slack so that they aren't binding up or pulling on the spots where they're plugging into the board or into the modules. So a uh, big step up there. You do still have a little bit that's off to the side, but it's very minimal. And then you do have your air hose on top. But again, uh, a big step up from what we've seen on many of the other lasers. They do, of course, have a offline controller and this is a touch screen, but this does have some nice advanced features into it that you can actually turn off certain functions and functionality and you have much more control than I've seen other, or other offline controllers. So we'll try to do some playing around with that. In addition to that, you can load files onto it with a USB drive. Other features of it, it does have a key for locking out the operation with this plugged in, but the key turned off, you will not be able to turn on. You do have to turn the key on to be able to turn the laser on. It does also have other safety features such as a flame detection system and a tilt detection system so that if it is bumped or it sees flame, it will shut the machine down. And those are easily addressable and turned on and off within the offline controller here on the touchscreen. You don't have to go digging for it in the software. One of the things I really love about this laser and they've been listening is the cables are off to the side. So you have your USB-C input cable that goes to your laptop. You have your power cable and then you have another cable that comes out to your power supply. And what this does is allow for M8 control for your air assist. So you can set your air to its volume. You leave it in there. In light burn, you can tell it to turn on or off with the layer. No more having to manually remember to turn this on or off. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole build on this one. They have a really good manual here that does walk you through step by step. They have some decent pictures as well as there are some great videos on their website and YouTube channel as well. So uh, I'm just going to hit a few of the highlights that I found in building this. 
All right, so this assembly really only took me about half an hour, maybe 40 minutes to put together. And that was with trying to mess a little bit with cameras and double checking things in the manual. And so I would set aside yourself a good half hour to an hour to assemble this, depending on your familiarity with these machines or other lasers. However, you should not need any specialty tools. It does come with all the tools you need. You don't even really need a square to check the alignment because as you pull these uh, pieces together they do self align very well so there's four bolts on each of the corners and you just line up the holes and then your your frame will kind of key together and write itself the whole way through now this laser will work with either laser grbl or lightburn if you've been watching my channel for a while you know i really love using lightburn it works with so many of the lasers out there that it's easy to jump from one to the other and do some real comparisons but it's also easy to share with other people your files and to uh, have kind of a baseline control if you do go from this laser to another one you'll know the software already all right so i've been using this laser for a couple weeks now i've been doing some tests and here is one of them on my typical quarter inch plywood from home depot this is just the inexpensive sanded plywood and as you can see here it is cutting out at 450 millimeters a second up to 90 100 percent power and this is you know with this plywood in particular it can be a little random so you do get some imperfections i try to run them a few times but that gives us a close baseline and that's performing pretty well again this is a single pass and uh, at 24 watts of power that's uh, about what i'd expect however we do have that option to do step down uh, passes with the z so we could actually increase our speed and increase our passes a couple times and maybe get even more uh, consistency possibly even better overall speed by doing that so that's some stuff i'm going to play around with in a future video um, but for now let's test out some of the features we're going to do a cut and engrave we're going to test the power on and off with the air and uh, let's just see how it does all right so i have more of this quarter inch sanded plywood and i have set up a file that has both an engrave of my logo and the ikea logo and then we're going to have it switch over to do a cut file now i'm going to use the auto air on both however i am going to leave the air turned down low just to keep some positive airflow through the engrave but then i'll flip it up to full for the cut so for the engrave, I am going to run the engrave at 28,000 millimeters per minute. So we're only going about half that speed. That's much faster than I've run any of my other lasers at this. We'll just set it at 100% power. And then we're going to try to do the cut, switching over to about 400 millimeters a minute and a single pass. But I'm going to have the Z-axis drop down about 0.1 inch, which is going to be about half the thickness of this material. Try to get that focus point right in the middle. So... I'm going to get this set on the laser, we'll have it home, we'll have it autofocus, go through all those things and see how it does in this quick, simple test job. All right, so the job finished. Let's take a look at how it did. So we have it mostly cut through. We just have a few little spots here where it didn't make it through, but it's gonna pop right out, which is completely normal with this type of plywood. You're always gonna have just little sections that sometimes don't cut through very well. So this total job took eight minutes and 41 seconds. That was for doing the full scanning. And I, if you notice, I also, had it outlined so i did a two-step layer where it did the fill and then it outlined every fill area that just makes the letters and uh, the objects really pop out a little bit more and then of course we did that single cut in this quarter inch so uh, as you hopefully noticed the z-axis it dropped down when it was going to do the cutting operation came down about 0.1 inch to be roughly half of this uh, slightly smaller and quarter inch material uh, and then when the job was done, it shut the air off automatically and it parked itself. So 
Uh, everything was successful about this quick little test on here. So let's go ahead and run an engraving test, see how it does in that, see if we can really get that speed up. All right, so I've found a piece of eighth inch Baltic birch and I've put it in here. I'm gonna go for about an eight inch square photo. I've pulled up this kitten image off of a group that offers up free files for testing photo engravings. And we're gonna give this a shot. I'm throwing it out there at the 48,000 uh, millimeters per minute that they say this can run at. And uh, we're just gonna throw it at 100% power. We are gonna see how this turns out. So this is the experiment, let's see how it does. All right, well this finished up, it took just under 40 minutes to do this. Again, this was about eight inches square. And it did run at, uh, we would say 48,000 millimeters per minute and 100% power. So I think it's a little light. We could put a got more contrast out of it. I'll try to get in nice and close though. Um, the detail in there is pretty nice. It would just be nice to have a little more contrast. So I think you know, definitely at that speed, if you had the higher wattage version of this, um, you could probably get this darker. But still, the fact that it's trying to run at that speed now, granted, uh, due to acceleration and the distance it's traveling, uh, it's probably not necessarily reaching that speed very often. And even in the middle here, it was having to slow down uh, in the high contrast areas to uh, make adjustments. But um, did move along fairly smoothly, very quickly. Uh, I'm not seeing any variation, like any skewing in here. Uh, and so for engraving, I'm pretty impressed with this at running it at, uh, attempting to run it at its top speed anyway. So uh, I do also want to try to run just a vector, a solid graphic. I think that's going to run a little more smoothly at speed. So we'll try that as well. And uh, we'll keep moving on with the tests. All right, so I ran the vector test on this piece of plywood and it came out pretty well. Uh, it, it could be darker, but it is very smooth. There are no lines. It did not uh, skew anywhere. And then you see the, the follow-up line that does the outline gives it a nice pop. And so I'm liking the quality of it. It would be great if the color was a little bit darker. Uh, obviously we could slow this down and get that. Um, but if you opted for the next power up in, uh, in the module, definitely could be running at this 48,000 millimeters a minute or however fast it's getting up to speed. You know, it's, it's, it's got to ramp up and ramp down. So it's hard to say that it's truly running at 48,000 millimeters a minute, but I hit pushed it to where it's advertised limited is and uh, did a pretty good job on that and was still uh, straight square looking good. So uh, I'm happy with that. It was nice to see the speed there and the quality of the engraving is good. So. What I would like to do next is I want to try cutting some thicker material and testing the step down feature of the z-axis. So I did find this piece of three quarter inch pine. So this is a softer material and really that's what you're looking at being able to cut uh, this thicker material with these lasers. And uh, we're going to start uh, at the focus depth and then we'll bring it down uh, a couple millimeters down about uh, a couple times and see if we can get through this in a few cuts. Uh, now we're only going to be limited to about five to six millimeters before we're getting really close to the shroud and the cone so we can't step down truly to center or past but this should help us uh, get that focal point down deeper on pass two and three and see if we can get through this in maybe three passes. So I'm going to throw this on there and we'll give that a shot.
All right, so let's take a look at this. It almost came through and there was a lot of charring. But what I noticed is on the second pass, it almost had already gotten through. And we have some burning on the backside here. So it was obviously going too slow. It did pop out, but we've got some charring here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start it uh, a little bit lower on the first pass to get it deeper. I'm gonna run it faster and still step it down those three times. And we'll see if we can get this a little bit better. It's all true. All right, so I had sped this up to 300 millimeters a minute and had it stepping down one millimeter each pass and starting at one millimeter lower. Um, still didn't get quite through this time, so this is just kind of a balance of tweaking this out. So I think if I add one more pass at the same speed and depth, we'll see how it does. And All right, well, we almost got through. There's just a couple of little spots on there where the grain is just a little bit thicker and it's keeping it out, but we should be able to just pop this out, which we can. And as you can see, we're getting, we're kind of getting there. So we did have those pieces and there's a little imperfection, but you can see this is looking a lot better than this first one that was really charred on the bottom. This is far more caramelized and less charring and we didn't have, you know, the, the blowout and the flaming. So um, from here, definitely could dial it in a little bit more, but that step down feature is definitely allowing us to be more efficient with this, getting through thicker material. And, you know, this is three quarter inch pine. Um, that's really kind of pushing the limits of these as far as their focal length. So this is kind of an extreme case. I think if you're dealing with half inch material, um, this is going to work out really well. All right, that's where I'm going to leave this video here. This is more of kind of a general first impressions video and what some of the features are of this laser. I'm going to go more in depth on setting up the laser in Lightburn and really using that step down Z axis and the autofocus as well as using the offline controller. So definitely stay tuned. I'm going to have more videos out on this laser and we of course are going to jump into some projects with it as well. So if that is something that you want to learn more about on, leave a comment down below, something you're curious about with this laser or stuff you want to see. I will try to get that information out to you as quickly as I can. In the meantime, I'd like to thank Ikea for sending this out to me. Uh, definitely helps make these videos possible when they do send product for us to check out and for me to give you a good overview and review of what it can do. I will have links down below for this laser as well as some other items that I find useful in the shop. Many of those will be affiliate links and they do go to help support this channel and myself. So I hope you, uh, if you found this useful and you want to support me, that's a great way to do it. But otherwise, no pressure. If you have any other questions or comments, go ahead and leave that down below. Hit that like button. Uh, if you're new here and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button as well. All that goes into helping support this channel and I appreciate it greatly. So again, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you for checking out this video. I hope it helped you out and I hope to see you in a future video. But in the meantime, I hope you can get out in your workshop and make something too. We'll see you soon.